work. Okay, there we are, that's nice and dry. Now our next move is, we're now coming, look, horizon sky, middle ground, we're now down in the foreground. And the foreground of this picture had quite a lot to offer. There was all kinds of bushes and everything else. I think we'll start over here and concentrate on our main bush. But before we do that, we'll put out the rest of our paint. We need to put out some of the lemon yellow. And I'm putting that over there beside the blue. Do you see the way I'm doing that? There's a reason, because blue and yellow make green. And if I had it off over here, I'd have to move the paint about. That clever, yes. I didn't think of that. The old masters did, that's what they did. Now I've taken some of the raw sienna, some of the lemon yellow, and some of the blue, and getting a kind of a greeny kind of color, and that's what I'm gonna start putting in. Now I want the brush fairly dry on this thing because I don't want to, I want to create kind of leafy effects. Watch this, from the ground up. Now this is quite light in color, and obviously we're gonna get darker than this, but that just gives me my initial stippling, if you like, that's the word we're looking for, yeah, stippling. See that, stipple, stipple, stipple. Now we get a bit darker. And how do we do that? Well, we add some more of the blue and some of the yellow, a little more blue than yellow, and of course we get a greenier color. And then off we go on this, look, and there it is. Remember, it was a misty kind of a day. You don't want to make this too kind of brilliant and bright or anything. Now we can put in some nice uh, leaves and trees and stalks and things in a minute. We can have leaves, what am I talking about? Now I'm assuming that we're coming down to about here, right down to the foreground that is. So let's feed that bit in. So we always start light and then we get darker because you can always darken, but you can't always lighten in watercolor. So be careful and be aware of that. See now, I'm beginning to get a nice kind of an effect now. You see it? And I'm gonna come out a bit there as well. We don't want it too perfect. Now watch, put that away for a moment. Hmm. You're following me now, he says. Now I'm gonna put in the, the kind of, the stalks and the trees and the branches and all that kind of thing. Create a, uh, this is the rigor brush, just drag it up like that. This is. Neat burnt umber. Neat burnt umber, burnt umber by itself. You know what I mean by neat burnt umber? You do, of course, yeah. So you're an expert now. I hope you're following this. And I hope also that you're trying it. Because you know, you'll never enjoy painting unless you try it. It's very, it's a funny kind of a hobby like that. Unless you actually do it, you don't enjoy it as much. And it's so easy. I wish I'd known years ago. Never lonely with the old paintbrush. And if you're sitting there not feeling the best or whatever it is, uh -huh, get the paint brushes out, you get rid of a headache. Because you use the other side of your brain. So they tell me, yeah. Now, now I'm gonna come down a bit here. And you see, I've created these lovely, now the brush, if you watch what I'm doing, just to do it for you a little quickly, or a little slowly, a little quickly, just drag the brush out, I lift it off the paper, and as I do, this, the marks get thinner, because as I lift the brush off, it, it comes together. As I lean on it, it gets fatter. Do you understand that? Each brush, you see, has its own special use. And that's why I find it's more important to explain to people how these things work, and then they can do it for themselves. Now, that's it. Now, I'm going to dry that. 